is Greece's bucket list island. Beautiful Santorini with its blue dome churches and incredible villages perched on dizzying cliffs. It's pretty amazing. But in high season, it can be overcrowded, expensive, oh, very loud. <laughs> and frankly, not worth the hype if you don't know how to visit. I mean... I'm gonna give you some tips for how to explore the popular sites, and we're going to have some very unique experiences too. We're going to check out incredible nature, delicious wine and local cuisine, and even learn about music and mythology. I'll also show you an alternative to the famously crowded sunset spot at Ia, which most people don't know about. So I couldn't start this video without showing you one of the popular Blue Dome churches. This is the famous Three Bells of Fira Church. It is one of the icons of Santorini, so you may have seen this image before. From up here, we can learn a bit about the island's geography. Santorini is located in the Cycladic Island Group. It was formed by a volcanic eruption thousands of years ago. The island's main towns, Ia and Fira, are located on this dramatic cliffside, referred to as the Caldera. These views are what have made the island famous. Fira is the island's main town and touristic hub. And honestly, if you're here in the morning, it's really nice, it's not very crowded, but thousands of cruise ship passengers come here every day flooding the streets, looking for the best photo, and it can get very hectic. See what I mean? <laughs> My top tip for you with Fida is to really get out of here and explore the rest of the island. There's so much more that we have to see. The best way to get around the island is definitely with a rental car. This will give you a lot of flexibility. You'll be able to really get off the beaten path. Parking can be difficult in Ia and Fira in high season. And there's also a public bus system connecting a lot of the island. Tickets are just a couple euros. I recommend visiting one of Santorini's inland villages, like Megalohori. Along with the villages of Pirgos and Emborios, it's one of the most charming on the island. And I'm one of the only people here today a blue dome without all of the crowds. You're going to appreciate that soon, trust me. I'm very excited to visit the Symposion Cultural Center in Megalohori, where Yanis Pantazis and his wife Argi connect music and mythology in a daily interactive performance. While telling stories from Greek mythology, Yanis demonstrates musical instruments described in the myths. Like these double syrinx flutes. Similar to a bagpipe, the tsambuna is a traditional instrument of Santorini. So after that very cool performance, I have the chance for Yanis to show me how to make a pan pipe. I found out I'm not a pan pipe prodigy. I don't know if I can do it. So, four short and one long, okay? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I have to do it. I have to start again. <laughs> Fortunately, I get a chance to try the more user-friendly Apollonian Lira, which, according to Yanis, is... A music instrument that opens the gate of music immediately to somebody that wants to feel the joy of music. Music has the ability to give us confidence, mm -hmm. and the instrument of Apollo is the greatest instrument to do that. It's really fun. I could play that for a while. <laughs> Apollo, here I come. In Greek mythology, music was a gift from the gods to humankind. Now I want to learn about another ancient aspect of Santorini, wine. Evidence of wine production here dates back 3,500 years. 
I'm very excited to visit Domaine Sigalas. This is one of the approximately 20 wineries on the island. I ask winery manager Spiro Lemanis to take me straight to the vines, which are pruned in a basket shape. So Spiro, tell me what we're looking at here. Why this kind of circular shape? Keeping the vine close to the ground, you allow it to absorb moisture that evaporates from the ground and uh, keep itself hydrated without irrigation from our part. The island's volcanic pumice stone plays an important role. What's most important to remember uh, is that we wouldn't be able to grow anything on the uh, soil of Santorini if it weren't for those um, tiny pumice stones. They absorb the moisture, uh, they lock it up, and then they give it back to the grapevine. This is what allows us to to, to go on with our viticulture on the island. So without this pumice stone, we would have no famous wine. It wouldn't Santorini. be possible, it wouldn't be possible. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. The Assyrtico grape variety put Santorini on the map as an international wine destination. And like everywhere in Greece, there are some specialties, and here in Santorini, we have some specific ones. Yellow split peas cooked into a spread called fava. Santorini cherry tomatoes with local goat cheese and vine leaves stuffed with rice, dolmades, a dish that's not specific to Santorini, but delicious. Mm. <laughs> it's amazing, Santorini fava. It's time for the beach. I'm gonna be real with you, Santorini is not famous for its beaches. You won't find those kind of crystal blue waters that Greek islands are known for, but the black volcanic sand is pretty cool. I like it. <laughs> I'll try to look like it's not cold for me. I've never been filmed in the water. <laughs> I don't know what to do, it's kind of awkward. One of my favorite beaches is Vlichada, known as Moon Beach, due to these formations that were created as wind eroded volcanic rock. It's pretty otherworldly, actually. I recommend you avoid the famous red beach for your own safety. Landslides are frequent and the path down is forbidden to use, although that's clearly not adhered to. Instead, admire it from a distance from above or from a catamaran or kayak tour. And now the village you've all been waiting for. This is Ia, the top tourist spot on the island. It's famous for its terraced buildings, blue dome churches, and the sunset. In the last 30 years, Ia went from a sleepy fishing village to a full-blown tourism hotspot. I recommend you come during the off-season, before May or after October, so you can really enjoy the beauty of Ia without all the crowds. Honestly, when there's space, it's really charming. I really like it. Here's a tip. Do not plan to see the famous Blue Dome churches right before sunset. If you do, you are in for this. It's kind of crazy. It's really like, it wraps all around the corner and there's just one person posing with the church in the background. And be sure to respect private property and mind the signs you see if you get caught up in a photo frenzy. If you want to see the famous sunset, arrive at least two hours early in high season to get a spot. Can you sing a song for us? Okay. Are you ready for my biggest tip for how to avoid the crowds, have stunning caldera views, and see the sunset? The hike from the town of Fira to Ia. Some say it's one of the most beautiful hiking routes in the world. 
It's a 10 kilometer, six mile hike that takes around three hours. It's completely exposed though, so do not go in the midday heat. Either start very early or like I have, time it so that you'll end up on the Ia side around sunset. Starting in Fira, you'll climb up to the village of Imerovigli. Eventually, you'll leave the settlements and be nearly alone in nature with great views all around. Incredible! Best caldera views. I promised you them. Here they are. Are you ready for my sunset tip? Well, right before you get to the village of Finikia, stop here at Profitis Ilias Church. You will be one of the only people, and the views are incredible. Trust me. No crazy crowds, all alone. Can't complain about that. Amazing caldera views and an experience that's close to nature without all the crowds. This wraps up our trip to Santorini. Obviously, there's so much more you can do on this island, but I had a really, really good time, and I hope you did too, and you're ready for your next vacation here. Which part of the island would you like to visit? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments. And until next time, goodbye.